Hello everybody and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be doing Conway's Game of Life in Shader Nodes. Uh, there's absolutely no benefit to doing it in Shader Nodes versus Python or any other normal scripting uh, language. But you know, like, uh, why not do it in Shader Nodes, right? So we're going to delete everything in the scene apart from the camera. Shift A, add a plane, you already know how to do that. Hit 7 on the numpad, Control Alt 0 to get our camera. Uh, looking down then we need to go to orthographic uh, set our orthographic scale to 2 and set our uh, red dimensions to uh, at Whatever resolution you want your Conway's game of life to take place in for example 16 uh, Pixels either side works well we Save that because we've done a lot of work. We don't want to lose it. Okay. Let's go to shading click on the plane Add a new material, we can go into shaded view. Delete the Prince BSDF, we're not doing any of that uh, lighting or any of that stuff, you know. We're doing shader nodes, pure maths. Um, so we're gonna add an image texture, create a new one, make it 16 by 16, and call it something like generation N. And we can get rid of alpha. Yeah, that should be, should be good. First thing, we can we can draw some initial condition for this generation N. So let's go, first of all, we're, we're gonna get rid of studio lighting and we're gonna set it to flat. And that just gets rid of all the glare and stuff, so we're just looking at the image. If you go F, then this um, changes the radius of, of our brush. And we can actually uh, paint some kind of initial condition. But right now it's looking a bit weird, right? It, it, we, we're not getting pixels, we're sort of getting like a ble uh, blurred m like mess. Uh, and there, there's two reasons for this, right? First of all, the fall off, we need to set that to constant. Um, and the other reason is we've got interpolation, which sort of smooths out the image. This is good for high res images when you want to, you know, get more bang for your buck. But for lower res images, it's best to go for closest to get that, you know, pixelated look. Right, so we need to go to texture paint, bring our brush up to white. If you want to get, you know, the secondary color, which is black on the fly, you can actually use control click. But yeah, as you can see, if we're painting, uh, we now get, yeah, solid pixels. There's no graying or interpolation or anything like that. And one cool uh, initial condition you can use for uh, the Conway's Game of Life, just to test it, is this. And this is called a glider. And this will actually go across the, uh, the board or the world or whatever it's called. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, it will look cool. So we're gonna use this as our initial condition. So we can save this image onto wherever you have this saved. And now let's go to shading, right? So it's looking a bit weird, right? We've got the kind of grayness, and I think you've heard this before in a tutorial. Set the view transform from Filmmaker to standard, right? I mean, you've heard that a million times already. For, for doing um, usual CGI, you know, with lighting and everything, you want it on Filmic, but if we're just doing images, we want to set it to standard. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're going to take this image, I'm going to move it in every direction, one pixel. So up, across, down, diagonally, uh, one pixel. And then we're going to sum all of those. So each pixel will then be assigned a number zero to nine, or zero to eight, sorry. And then we can use that to determine how many neighbors each pixel has. So if you don't know what I mean, uh, you'll, you'll work out, you'll work it out eventually. But anyway, we're going to set, name it something like uh, epic shader network okay cool now how do we move this image well we can add a texture coordinate plug the uv into the vector then add a vector math whatever value we plug in here it moves it okay so we're going to put if we want to move it across the x-axis by one pixel then we do one over and then the number of pixels which is 16 and then that moves it along one pixel Okay, but what if we want a variable amount of pixels? Well, we need to add a value node. So it's the number of pixels, which is 16 in this case. Then we need to do maths, divide one over this value, and then combine x, y, z, and plug this into the x-axis and that into the vector. Okay, so now, uh, let's say we wanted to move it half a pixel. Well, then we could put 32 here. But, you know, let's just leave it at 16 for now. So now we have a, yeah, we can change the resolution at any point when we won't run into any problems. Okay, so let's move it on the, the other way around. Let's move it on the x-axis, negative uh, 1 over 16. The way we do that is we just multiply this by minus 1 and then plug that into the x-axis. Duplicate all of that. Make sure the UV is plugged into the top socket and this is plugged into the bottom. It doesn't really matter which way around they are because adding, you know, 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1, right? 
It doesn't matter which way around. Okay, so now we're gonna duplicate these. Uh, and let's just keep going through. So we're gonna duplicate this twice as well. Duplicate this again. Make sure to plug the UV into uh, the UV top socket of here. And with Node Wrangler enabled, you can do that uh, shift right click to get that. Anyway, so now we're gonna plug that into the Y axis and this into the Y axis. And uh, with this plugged into the bottom socket here and this plugged into the bottom socket here, we have now have all orthogonal directions, uh, movements of the original image. So the original image looks like that. We can move it across, across, down and up. Okay, now we need to do the diagonal direction. So let's just duplicate all of that. These will be all of the yeah, diagonal directions. We can duplicate all the four of these as well. Uh, and the first diagonal direction is positive on both axes. So let's just drag this down and we'll plug this into both axes, plug that into that, and then plug the UV coordinate into the UV coordinate. Okay, let's drag this here so we, you know, sort of controlling it from the middle. Okay, so that's that's both positive. So this will go sort of down and across, I believe, from the original. Because this is like reversed, so negative is up and positive is down. Um, negative is right and positive is left. It's kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. Now let's do the next one. So UV coordinate in the top, combine X, Y, Z in the bottom. And this will be negative in both axes. So this will go top and across. Next one is we'll do positive in the top and negative in the bottom. So let's do, yeah, positive in the top first and uh, negative in the bottom. Remember this uh, multiplied by minus one is just this, but negative. And we'll plug this into the top or the bottom and the UV coordinate into the top. And the last one, which will be negative in the top and positive in the bottom. Uh, let's go to full screen just by control zero, just so we can uh, see things better. Let's plug that into the top and this into the bottom. And yeah, this one was positive in the top. So now we'll do positive at the bottom, negative at the top. And you'll, you'll notice we aren't using the Z axis and that's because uh, that's completely irrelevant in 2D, right? We're only using X and Y. Okay, so now we have all of the images and they're displaced from the original image. One pixel in every axis, right? And the good thing about this is we also have this slider here, which will control the number of pixels. So we can alter that at any point. We could also replace these with um, shader groups. Uh, and that way we could swap out the image and it would change for all of them. So you wouldn't have to individually replace these. But that's just, you know, some extra stuff you can do. Let's delete this. Uh, and like I said before, we're actually going to sum all of these or add all of these, right? So we're going to go to maths, add and add the top two together. It doesn't really matter which order you do. Then we're going to add that to the next one. And then we're going to add that to the next one. And then we're going to add that to the next one. And then we're going to add that. So you have added the last one in the chain. So now we have all of them added together. Now let's take a look at what that looks like. And it just looks like a block. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but essentially our viewport's only showing us values zero to one because we've got, we're using standard transform. So we, yeah, we can only see values. Yeah, one to, one to zero. If we multiply this by an eighth, one divided by eight, as you can see, we can actually see what's going on now, right? So this white square here, this is where there are most neighbors, right? This square here has most, the most neighbors out of all of these pixels. The slightly lighter ones have uh, slightly less pick, uh, neighbors. Black obviously has zero neighbors and these light gray ones have you know, one, I think. So with this, like kind of heat map in a way or neighbor map. This tells us how many neighbors each pixel has. And this here expresses it as values one to nine or one to eight, sorry, sorry. Uh, a pixel can either have zero or eight neighbors. That's the range that it falls at. Okay, so let's say we added a greater than node. This will actually show us how much has a greater than, let's say three, for example. This is the number of pixels that has greater than three. Now we do need to use a value slightly different to three because of the error margins in Blender. This will this will mess things up in the future. This is why I'm at attempt two for the uh, Conway Game of Life any percent speed run. It's because I messed up in the uh, the first recording in this tutorial. This can't just be three in order to know how many pixels are greater than three. Because of the error margins, we do need to put this a little bit higher, maybe something like 3.01 or some value like that. Okay, so this will tell us, yeah, which, how many pixels have three or more neighbors. So, sorry, greater than three neighbors, so four, five, six, seven, etc. Uh, and this, those, those uh, will actually die. So this white square here will die, sadly. Uh, 
Now let's do less than two. And again, we have to, uh, the, yes, all these white pixels have less than two. And because of error margins, again, we need to put this to something like 1.9. Nothing's changed here, but when we save out the image and plug it back in, it will kind of, it, it can mess up if you don't put like a value like 0.9 or point you know, 99 or something like that. And so if we add these together now, or, you know, if you want to do this kind of properly, you can actually do maximum and this will just, just output the maximum. So wherever it's one, right? But this is kind of the same as adding. Uh, so either maximum or add is fine. This combines basically the, this and this. So those are the ones, that the, the white squares represent squares which will be dead in the next generation. And now we need to represent which ones will be alive in the next generation. And so those ones that have equal to three neighbors, right? So there's no equal to maths node here, but there is a compare. So if we compare it to three with an epsilon of let's say 0 0.01, so with an error margin of 0 0.01 of three, uh, where it's where it's equal to, it will output white, and where it's not equal to, it will output black. Just just like these nodes, and these will be the newborn pixels, right? The pixels which meet the criteria for a new pixel to be born into or a new cell. Uh, this is just basic Conway Game of Life stuff. So you know, here you can actually modify the games, the rules of the Game of Life, here. If you don't know what the game of life is, uh, you should probably know that before watching this tutorial, but essentially those pix pixels with greater than three or less than two neighbors die. Pixels with three neighbors, exactly three neighbors, will be born, right? At least empty ones, which are being represented by black pixels here. Um, so yeah, with these, with the ones we take away and the ones we add, we can take the original image here and we can literally do that. We can go to add or maximum either way and subtract. Oh, sorry, we did the other way, the other way around, sorry. So we're subtracting this one and we're adding this one. And as you can see, this now outputs the next generation. So this is the input and this is the output. Okay, brilliant. So we've done it. We've, we've uh, got the game of life with these nodes here. But the problem with this is we can only do one generation. Now what we could do is we could render this out and replace this image with this image. So let me just show you, just to do it manually, if we hit render or F12 image, save as and then save it as gener you know generation n save as and then we bring up generation n in the this here and we reload it by going here image and reload there is a hotkey but that is also the hotkey to do something else so i just you can just click the button if you reload it first of all we we kind of messed this up because the if you look at the render it's kind of gray and that's because we need to go to film and turn off the anti aliasing in this case it's called filter size but this, you can think of this as you know like anti aliasing like in video games etc it just basically smooths out the lines, which is good for high res, but not good for low res. So we want to, yeah, set this to filter size to zero. But anyway, if we render that now, we need to fix this because uh, we messed up the image. So yeah, if you hit render image, doesn't have the uh, outline because we've turned off the anti-aliasing. Save as, generation N, save as. And we reload the image, image, reload uh, in, in here. We just got to bring up the image in with this if it doesn't show up. We now get the next generation and it doesn't, you know, we could, we could keep doing this manually, right? F12, image, save as, click on this, save as image and image reload. And it brings us to the next generation. We could keep doing it like this, but there's actually a quicker way to do it. And that's with scripting. So let's go to scripting, create a new one, call it uh, epic code and I do actually have a code that I've already written and that is this code here so I'm a complete noob when it comes to python code like I don't absolutely nothing uh I, I yeah literally don't know how to code uh but I, there were a few you know I managed to get this uh, just simple code here that would automatically render save it and then reload the images okay so let's just go through this so import bpy this you just got to add it to the front of every code bpy context scene render file path whatever it just sets a file path of where you're sending it to this is actually wrong this is from uh, the other project so let me just uh, load up the new file path and uh, just a quick tip if you want to find the file path if you go to the properties for the uh, image here it actually gives you the location you can copy it paste it here the only thing you will have to do is swap these slashes from backslashes to forward slashes because windows has them the wrong way around for some reason and you want to put the name of your file at the end with a slash in this case it's uh, generation n okay so this code sets the uh, render resolution and renders it as a still not an animation and it writes it onto this destination here and then this this bit here just reloads the, the image, all the images in your scene. Okay, brilliant. So now if we go to shading and we change the shading workspace to the text editor, load up our epic code and we press play, the, uh, yeah, this now iterates, right? We've got Game of Life working inside of Blender. Uh, there's not really much more to say, right? The, you got, 
yeah, game of life in Blender. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, hope you have fun doing, I don't know, what, what this could be useful for. Uh, game of life related CGI. Um, so, yeah. See ya.